So that's my submission for the latest Ponisha render challenge. And for the rest of this video, I'm going to be giving an insight into how I made it, my workflow, as well as some tips and tricks for achieving a shot like this. Before we get started, if you're interested, the project files for this will be available on my Patreon, so you can download the Blender scene as well as the Nuke scripts with the compositing, and all of the render passes and have a play yourself. So let's start right at the beginning. The first thing I started on was creating the character. The main inspiration behind this scene was some GoPro footage that I filmed earlier this year on a snowboarding holiday, and I used that footage very heavily as reference for the character, so I modelled it off of my actual snowboarding gear. And also in compositing and colour grading, it was a great ref for how bright should the sky be, how blue should it be, what sort of colour temperature is the snow. Very helpful to look at real world footage when doing this kind of thing. I began by making some very low poly versions of the clothes and then used some of the sculpting tools in Blender to add some bunching up and cloth wrinkles and all sorts of things to make it look a bit more exciting. I sculpted in some creases to make some pockets and things to add some detail onto the mesh. The sculpts were very high poly so I exported them out to instant meshes and used that to retopologize them just roughly and then used a combination of UVs and hand paintings to add some details onto the clothes as well. I also utilised hard surface modelling for the helmet and the goggles, again based off some reference footage and I also took a couple of stills of my snowboarding helmet on my phone. This was particularly useful in the shader when I was making the surface imperfections as I had something to compare it to. Then the same thing for the snowboard and the bindings. It's a pretty simple shape that I just cut out of a reference image and then used that as the image texture for the decals on the snowboard as well. Once that was done I used Rigify to create an IK rig for the character. The IK bones for the feet are parented to the snowboard so I can move the character's waist up and down and make him crouch and this means they'll also stick to the snowboard when I rotate it independently, which gives me a lot of really good control in animation. I added one extra bone and parented everything to that so that the snowboard and the character could be moved left to right in the scene to get a bit of the drifting movement of the snowboard. And then that was it, it's a pretty simple rig. Moving on to animation, I roughed out the speed that I wanted the snowboarder to be moving at, again getting a little bit of that drifting sense of carving left to right. I'm doing this with that additional root bone that I added to give me control over the whole character and I'm also using this to add the rotation as it goes through the jump. Once that was working nicely, I moved on to refining the animation, getting things like the snowboarder's centre of gravity in the right place, the roll of the feet as the snowboard is doing the turns, and keeping the head and neck looking in the correct direction. I wanted to have a really good sense of impact on the landing after the jump, so I really exaggerated the animation of bending the knees and getting the arms to bounce down for a few frames and then come back up to really sell the landing. Once the animation was looking good, I started adding some detail into the scene. I began fairly basic with this and slowly upped the detail and added extra assets over the course of a few days, adding in things like sponsored advertising boards, the finish line posts, the flags along the side of the course as well as a safety net fence. I also grabbed some models from Mixamo and used a few different animations to add some variety into the crowd. As well as the animation differences, I also tweaked the shaders on some of them so there was more variety in the colours within the crowd, just so it didn't look like anything was too duplicated. I then also hand animated a few photographers in the crowd that were holding cameras, and they follow the snowboarder as it comes down from the landing. Then later in compositing I'm going to add some camera flashes to these to give the scene some life. I created some terrain for the floor and did some sculpting to get it into the shape that I wanted. And then to make some details in the snow, I unwrapped the floor geometry and then exported the UVs into Affinity Photo. And then from here I used a few different types of brushes to hand paint trails in the snow. Then I brought this texture back into Blender and used it as a bump map in the snow shader, which gives the floor around the slopes a nice interesting detail. This breaks up the otherwise very flat white shader of all the snow, and also gives the impression that there's lots of people that have already gone down the jump, which is a bit more accurate to what you'd see in real life. Next, I used a hair particle system to add lots of trees into the shot, and then brought in a few models of trees from an asset library that I have, and scattered them across the floor with some variety in their scale to make it look nice and organic. I also hand placed a few large rocks, again just to add some variety into the shot, and then I used metaballs and a bit of sculpting to add some snow on top of the rocks as well. For the mountains in the background, I used height maps combined with displacement modifiers to create the background geometry. These also came with image textures, which was really good, so it made the snow look nice and realistic without me having to do any painting. I created five or six different mountains and then arranged them in a way that I thought was complementary to the framing of the shot, so there's kind of a triangle that draws your eye into the background like it's going down into a valley. Getting a bit more granular and focusing on some of the smaller details, I then created some trails coming off of the snowboard. I did two different techniques for this, the first is a smoke simulation, and it's just kicking up some fine mist coming off the back of the snowboard, it stops as he goes over the jump, and then starts again for the landing. Then I did the same thing with the particle system, as the character moves throughout the scene, it's chucking up some small particles of snow that fly backwards towards the camera. I also made another particle system that launches a few chunks of snow off the top of the ramp, as the snowboarder goes over. This makes it feel like there were a few clumps of snow that were stuck on the snowboard, and they kind of hang in the air for a few seconds which I think works quite nicely. At this point I started to run out of time a bit. I wanted to make everything in this shot completely from scratch but I just didn't have the time to model everything. So I grabbed a model of a ski chalet as well as an animated ski lift off of Sketchfab and placed these into the shot. I also added a big cinema screen behind the crowd. My initial plan was to actually render this scene using a different 3D camera and put that footage on the screen as if it was being filmed from a different angle but I ended up running out of time so I just put some snowboarding artwork on there instead. 
At this point, the 3D scene is basically finished and it's ready to render. I split everything up into four render layers to give me the most flexibility while compositing. There's a beauty and utility pass for both the snowboarder and the environment. I then rendered the smoke sim coming off of the snowboard separately. And I also rendered the background mountains on their own so I had some more separation when layering things up. For the photographer models that I have in the shot, I placed a point light in front of all four of them and added them all to their own light groups. I then included these light groups in the render, so I then have control over turning them on and off in compositing. This means I can animate the camera flashes completely in comp, and I don't have to render the scene again if I want to change the timing, which is really useful. I also included a normals pass for the snowboarder, which again I can use to add some lighting interaction from the camera flashes. Here are all the render passes laid out in Nuke. The first thing I did is just combine all the layers, starting from the background and then working my way forward, merging everything on top of each other. I then created a massive sphere around the whole scene and put my HDRI onto this that I can use as the sky. And then I exported the three 3D camera from Blender as an Alembic and brought this into Nuke so I can render the sky through this the same as if I'd done it in Blender but this way gives me some more flexibility because I can fine tune things like the position of the sun without having to go back into Blender. In the end I combined two HDRIs together this allowed me to get the sun position and scale where I wanted it and then use some additional clouds from the second HDRI to make the sky look a bit more interesting. I started by using the light groups to animate the camera flashes. Here you can see me taking all of the light groups out from the render which completely removes their lighting interaction from the main shot but then I can plus them back over and animate them on and off which gives me complete control over their timing. In conjunction with this I then used the normals pass on the snowboarder and used that to relight the snowboarder from a particular angle that the camera flashes were coming from. I then expression linked the two together so that when the camera flash fires the lighting on the snowboarder appears and then a couple of frames later when it stops both of them turn off at the same time. So I did this for all four of the photographer 3D models. Then I also created an additional camera flash element. This is made from placing a small white circle on top of the cameras. And then I used a glint and an exponential glow to create a little lens flare coming off of the cameras. So it gives it a bit more of an optical feel as if it's flaring down the camera lens. After this, I moved on to making the environment look better. I added some haze and light wrap onto the edges of the objects against the sky. This blends their outline nicely into the background a little bit more rather than having really harsh edges. I also used the depth pass on the environment and background mountains layers and used it to create a sense of atmosphere falling off into the background so the distant mountains have a much more lifted black point. I also tinted this haze effect to be the colour of the sky as that's kind of how it works in real life. I also rendered the scene with 10% overscan so I'm now using that to add some lens distortion so the shot feels less CG. Then a few other small details like adding some overall haze on the entire shot and some halation on the highlights and I'm also adding a bit of chromatic aberration into the corners. I also created a lens flare coming off of the sun, which really brings everything together. I did this by creating an axis and placing it in the sun's location on the big sphere with the HDRI on it. And then I use a reconcile 3D node, which you plug the axis into as well as your 3D camera. And then it will generate a 2D tracking position based on the camera's perspective. So you can use this to pair it your flare to throughout the shot. I then built up a few different flare elements like some spike balls coming from the sun, a few irisy circle elements, and then a big chromatic ring at the side of the frame. This is animated up and down a bit throughout the entire shot. And then I also turn it off completely for a few frames when things in the foreground cross over the sun, for example the snowboarder's head or the flags or the finish line. This little detail makes the flare feel a lot more interactive with the shot. I added a couple of clouds on a card in 3D space and placed them in the midground of the scene so they would have some parallax between them and the background clouds. These are positioned in a way that they feel quite low down, like they're clouds passing through the valley that I created in the background with the mountains. So these are projected on a 3D card and then rendered through the 3D camera from Blender again. And it's a nice way of blending the background and the midground together slightly more. I relit the cloud slightly using some masks so it felt like the direction of the sunlight was the same as everything else in the shot. And then lastly, I added some camera shake. It's fairly subtle throughout the shot, it's just a little bit of high frequency wobble. And then when the snowboard lands I animated it to go a bit stronger so you get a bit of a bounce. The very final step was slapping a colour grade onto this to make it look nice and that is the shot finished and ready to be submitted for the render challenge. I hope this video was an interesting insight into the process and how I went about making this shot. Again if you're interested feel free to grab the project files on Patreon, it really helps me to continue making videos like this. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.